Hello. Today I shall be talking about target IORT, which stands for targeted intraoperative radiotherapy, which is given during lumpectomy for breast cancer. Acknowledgements are due to all the patients, clinicians, investigators, and teams from all over the world who participated in trials of intraoperative radiotherapy and testing whether it is as good as whole breast radiotherapy. So this is a photograph showing the International Steering Committee as well as the Trial Steering Committee appointed by NIHR. And these are all the authors of the latest British Medical Journal BMJ publication. So these are my potential conflicts of interest. That is, I receive a grant funding from UCL, for UCL from NIHR and honorary and travel reimbursement sometimes from Carl Zeiss. So I'll start from the beginning. When I worked in Tata Hospital in India and I had to, as a chief resident, had to give a diagnosis to patients telling them that you have breast cancer. And the next step was I had to ask them whether can you come to the hospital every day for six weeks for radiotherapy if we could preserve the breast. If they could stay that way and the cancer was small enough, we could preserve the breast. But if they can't and they had to go back to their hometown far away from Bombay, then they had to have a mastectomy. And it was not a very nice discussion to have. And I thought this was unique to India, but it wasn't. It happens in USA, across the Bay Bridge, when patients don't want to travel the Bay Bridge every day for three to six weeks. It happens in Australia, it happens in Denmark, and it happens in the UK. It happens all over the world. In this map, you can see how each radiotherapy center and its 13 mile radius doesn't cover the whole area of United Kingdom. Pathologically speaking, I had concern about this. I mean, I had this concern about patients, but there was also curiosity about breast cancer. And this whole organ analysis of mastectomy specimen, when analyzed in three dimensions, I found that breast cancer, other cancers in a breast, which is known to have just one cancer, is, has many other cancers in the breast and they are spread all over the breast. Now this goes completely against the fact that 90% of local recurrence after breast conserving surgery occurs in the area around the primary tumor. And if that is the case, then why should we treat the whole breast? And we presented this first time in Hong Kong and then published in the British Journal of Cancer and in the Lancet, suggesting that we should do a clinical trial testing whether radiotherapy only to the area around a tumor is adequate enough to give local control. So this was a multidisciplinary team in, in 2010, in the year 2000 at University College London. And you can see this is what we devised. So we worked with the industry with Carl Zeiss and created a device to give radiotherapy during the tumor, during the operation to the tumor bed. That's how it looks during the operation theater. And you can see here, Professor Baum and Professor Tobias. This is a specimen after having a wire guided wide local excision as it was very close to skin, a small amount of skin was taken away and the tumor is in the center of the specimen. And this is how the purse string is taken. You can see this is the purse string in the first diagram. This we test whether this applicator fixes it or not. And you can see the purse string being taken over here in which the uh, suture is taken at a level which is not in the, in the subcutaneous tissue, not in the dermis, so that the tumor is replaced by the applicator. So you can see how the purse string is taken here in the latter half. And you can see here the red line, that is where the, uh, the suture should be taken, not too close to skin, so that the distance to the dermis should be between eight to 10 millimeters. But if it is taken too deeply, all this tissue, which is the tumor bed, wouldn't be opposed to the applicator. So if you take it here, the tumor bed opposes to the applicator very clearly, and um, you give the radiation therapy to the correct place. So that's how it looks. And during COVID times, we have been giving this radiotherapy, making patients uh, avoid, allowing patients to avoid radio, coming back for radiotherapy for many days, one after the other. That's how it looks in the operation theater and that's how it looks on the operation table. So this is target IORT technique developed in UCL and Middlesex Hospitals in 1996 to 1998. Radiotherapy is delivered immediately after lumpectomy. It focuses radiation to the areas of highest risk and avoids radiation of surrounding, not surrounding, nearby um, vital organs. 
and so with the principle of precision and immediacy. There are various sizes of applicators available, so you can choose from 1.5 to 5 centimeters depending on the size of the tumor and the tumor bed. So we published the day, uh, how to do this technique in 2002 and also published uh, the first 25 patients results. And then we started the randomized trial. So randomized trial was testing whether this single dose of radiotherapy given in a risk-adapted approach can replace the usual long course of whole breast radiotherapy. The recruitment occurred between March 2000 to 2012. You can read about it on the website target.org.uk. Target is spelled with an I. So the rationale and development is in, in a very uh, quick way is whole breast radiotherapy is considered essential for um, after lumpectomy for breast cancer. And a course of radiotherapy, this long course makes many women choose mastectomy instead. And we found that breast often contains other cancers, but recurrence occurs around the original cancer. And this academic insight led to the idea of irradiating only the tumor bed during lumpectomy. And the device was created in collaboration with the industry. And then we started a randomized clinical trial once we showed that it was safe to do this in an operation theater. So in the target A trial, 2,298 breast cancer patients who were due to have a lumpectomy with tumor size less than three and a half centimeters in size, unifocal breast cancer on normal imaging, there was no need of an MRI, were randomly allocated to receive either lumpectomy followed by single dose radiotherapy during surgery or whole breast radiotherapy. If postoperatively certain specific features were found, such as lobular cancers or, or uh, positive margins, then these patients would have whole breast radiotherapy recommended to them in addition to the intraoperative radiotherapy, in which case the intraoperative radiotherapy served as the tumor bed boost. So the first publication of our results was in 2010 in the Lancet, and the second publication, including survival outcomes, were in 2013. So while we were waiting for long-term results, many of the obvious benefits were studied in more detail. So we found that because less area of the breast is irradiated, we expected cosmetic outcome to be better, and it was found to be better. And this was published in 2003 and again in 2013. Quality of life was found to be superior. Radiation-related quality of life, breast-related uh, quality of life, and cosmetic outcome was found to be superior in studies in Germany and in Australia. This study from Denmark found that patients had less pain following intraoperative radiotherapy compared with whole breast radiotherapy. And this was a preference study in which it was found that patients prefer IORT to standard radiotherapy and doctors would prefer intraoperative radiotherapy to standard radiotherapy in spite of a possibility of slightly higher increased local recurrence rate. And this is an important analysis of cost effectiveness by Dr. Michael Alvarado in US, where it was found that US would save about $1.4 billion over a course of five years if IORT was accepted as standard of care. And similar numbers are in UK. It is cheaper to give healthcare in UK, so it is less, but it is still about 9 million pounds in the UK saved when we start using this as standard treatment. This is an interesting aspect in which we analyzed how much distance is tra uh, traveled by patients after normal radiotherapy and how much would be saved if they have intraoperative radiotherapy. And this is what we found is that on average, 753 miles of travel and 30 hours of traveling is saved by patients. And you can see what a normal journey patients would make. I realized that while I'd be driving this only once or twice a month, most of my patients would be asked to drive this at least three or four weeks um, for their regular therapy. What a horrible journey I thought they had to put up with. So we thought our uh, target could reduce global warming in this way as well. And this was voice was of Mr. Nathan Coombs from Swindon. This is an interesting study in which Dr. Masarut, Dr. Baldassare, and, and uh, um, uh, did this analysis of patients who had surgery for breast cancer. Fluid from the wound after lumpectomy was collected and put on breast cancer cell lines, and they found that it increases proliferation, motility, and invasiveness. This was a scary thing. If, on the other hand, if the fluid was collected from a wound which had already had intraoperative radiotherapy, 
this stimulatory effect of wound fluid on cancer cells was abrogated by IORT. And you can see this also in this diagram in which the upper figure shows how quickly the cells are moving and that's abrogated by fluid taken from a wound which has had interrupted radiotherapy. So although the dose of radiation might be small, this in addition, addition would be inhibitory to cancer cells. So after all, finally, the proof of the pudding is in the clinical trial and the target a randomized control trial, now we are able to give the long-term results and they were published in August in the British, British Medical Journal. For this, long-term outcomes are important and we set the bar high for the quality of data. The first patient was randomized in March, 2000. And the data log was on 3rd of July, 2019. And for completeness of follow-up, this is where we set the bar high. We said, that follow-up would be considered complete only if 95% patients had at least five-year follow-up and 90% of patients had 10-year follow-up or were seen in the previous year before the data log. So we have lost two patients. I'm so sorry about that. One has immigrated to Finland and one have immigrated to Bulgaria. And this is out of how many patients? As out of uh, 534 patients, we have lost two, and I'm so sorry for that. I'm trying to get data on the lady who uh, immigrated to Finland. I got a phone number, but she don't pick up the phone. But the one who immigrated to Bulgaria, I'm sorry to say, I think I lost her. <laughs> so this is the quest. And this was the quest from every researcher in the trial. And that's how we got all the teams together to get the completeness to 95%. The team in uh, situ at UCL was, uh, was instrumental in making this happen. And this is what we got. You can see how the completeness is clear that there is the two graphs of expected and actual follow-ups and the two arms of the trial are very close to each other. And, in the, uh, and, it, and consequence of that is that target A has the largest amount of follow-up data in any partial breast irradiation trial for invasive breast cancer. You can see these graphs, each line represents a number of patients at each year of follow-up. So this was the randomization to remind you again between IORT, target IORT randomized to have risk adapted target IORT versus EBRT. The two randomized arms were very similar to each other. There was no difference found. And we must remember there was no difference found in age and body mass index as well. And this is important for the outcome of non-breast cancer mortality, where these two are major risk factors. No other pathological differences were there between the two arms of the trial. Now, we've already seen what are the advantages of target. There is uh, surgery is completed at the same time. There is less pain. They go home the same day. There's fewer complications. And there is better cosmetic outcome and improved quality of life. So but what is the patient thinking? what is the chance of my cancer coming back in the breast? Is that going to be the same? And that is the results. So the difference in the two recurrence rates was less than was 1.16%. And as you can see in this graph, at five years complete follow-up, there was one more local recurrence and one less death. And when you look in the long-term, you can see the chance of a woman living without a local recurrence at five years was about 94%. And at 10 years, there was no difference. And 12 years, there was no difference. Invasive local recurrence-free survival, there was no difference between the two arms. Mastectomy-free survival, that is a breast preservation chance, was the same. Chance of remaining free of distant disease was the same. And chance of dying from breast cancer was the same. No difference at all in any breast cancer outcome. But this is the very interesting and good finding, is that there was a reduction a significant and substantial reduction of 4.5% in the chance of dying from other causes. And that led to the overall survival curves of IORT being above and above the um, curves for external beam radiotherapy in the right-hand side. So this is the, these are the results, long-term results in one slide, local recurrence free survival, mastectomy-free survival, breast cancer mortality were the same, no difference at all. So breast cancer outcomes the same, non-breast cancer mortality-wise, target IORT did much better with about 4.5% increase in uh, survival. So in year 2000, the first patient was randomized. 2010, Lancet published our first results. 
and put our conclusions on their front page masthead, saying that for selected patients with early breast cancer, target IORT could replace the whole breast radiotherapy and should be offered as one. And in 2020, in the British Medic BMJ, we have confirmed that it gives rise to comparable breast cancer outcomes to EBRT and reduced non-breast cancer mortality. This, this made uh, a lot of media attention. It was on the front page of the Times. And uh, there are some important points I want to make here. Firstly, this increase in reduction in non-breast cancer mortality is very plausible. The effects of radiation on the heart start happening within six months. And you can see here, perfusion defects because of radiotherapy appearing within six months of radiation. And another paper from the Oxford group found that people who are smokers, this effect is even more amplified, not only for the heart, but also for lung cancer. What you see is that 23% of smokers given external beam radiotherapy will die because of either lung cancer or heart attacks. And this is 6% more than they would if they had no external beam radiotherapy. Now giving IORT will increase the overall mortality, uh, will reduce the overall mortality by 6%. And therefore I believe it's unethical to offer normal external radiotherapy to smokers who have lung cancer without explaining, who have had uh, um, smokers who have had breast cancer without explaining this and without giving the offer of intraoperative radiotherapy to them. What other point I want to make here is that Target had a substantial high-risk population, which is much more than seen in other trials of partial breast radiation. And this is similar to what we see in a normal clinic. So there were 83%, 85% patients were under the age of 70, 20% 20 patients, 20 patients were grade three, 22% patients were ER positive, or sorry, were node positive, and 19% patients were either ER negative or PR negative. So these are much higher risk than trials of no radiotherapy or other trials of partial breast radiation. Compare that with the PRIME2 trial of no radiotherapy. It was a, the size of the trial was smaller. There was hardly anybody with grade three. There were no node negative patients and there were no ER negative patients. And their local control as, as per the abstract in San Antonio in 2020, at 10 years, the local recurrence rate was nearly 10% compared to 1% with whole breast radiotherapy. And their binomial proportion of deaths from other causes seem to be 3.9% with versus 6.1%, which seems to be similar to what we have in target but the overall survival was not better at all. It was a little worse, 13 versus 12. So perhaps their non-breast cancer mortality benefit was nullified by the possible increase in breast cancer mortality. Whereas with target, with the effective radiotherapy, breast cancer control was the same and non-breast cancer mortality was reduced. In terms of the fast forward regimen, which is radiotherapy, which is highly compressed intensive regimen, these were again medium risk patients similar to target IORT, it does require between seven to 15 visits to the hospital, including planning and a boost in a quarter of patients. Breast cancer control is the same, but there is no reduction in mortality and there is higher toxicity with a quarter of patients, 25%, having hardened or indurated breast. And this is consistent with the physician assisted assessment of induration as well. And the lot come data, this is only five years and we expect after a longer period, this induration and fibrosis may get worse because of the high, higher doses given to the whole breast. Comparing it with other types of uh, partial breast radiation, you can see with the check estro trial and other brachytherapy studies, the patient needs to have so many wires put in the breast and needs uh, extra procedures, stay in the hospital for five days. And all of these other methods do give rise to scattered irradiation to nearby organs, vital organs, which is avoided by intraoperative radiotherapy. We have discussed all this in our um, uh, commentary in British Journal of Cancer, which you can access by going and uh, taking a cap using a camera to scan this uh, QR code. In the trial, 20, 2,298 patients were treated. So it was all over the world. It was a real world trial, I've explained how the trial population was representative of a standard clinic population. Simultaneously, since the time the first results came out, people have sh uh, shown in series, 200 patients in France, they had local recurrence at five years of 2.5%. This was a study uh, from US where three year recurrence rate was one and a half percent. This was a study from uh, China where it was a con case control study 
where they found recurrence rate was similar to those with whole breast radiotherapy. This is from Russia. Now this center has treated more than 1,000 patients. This is a study from multi-center study, multi-nation study of target E elderly patients. For them, the local recurrence rate was 1.5% at five years. And this is a study from multi-center from France, where again, 676 patients with a five-year local recurrence rate of 1.7%, all very similar to target A. This is a paper which describes how target A can be used along with oncoplastic surgery, which is difficult to irradiate afterwards because of extensive trauma and mobilization of the wound. So the radiation oncologist doesn't know where the original tumor bed was. Whereas with IORT, you can give the radiotherapy to the correct tumor bed and then move around the tissues to give the better cosmetic outcome. You can see how this is explained very well in this paper. And it looks like if neoadjuvant chemotherapy is given to the patient, and if you give target IORT, in addition to whole breast radiotherapy as a tumor bed boost, it seems that it may improve local control. It may even improve survival because of better local control or abscopal effects. So in conclusion of the target A trial, risk adapted single dose radiotherapy during lumpectomy achieved similar long-term cancer control, similar to EBRT and reduce non-breast cancer mortality compared to whole breast radiotherapy. This has substantial advantages to patients, better quality of life, cosmetically superior and less pain, more convenient for the patient, there's less travel time and lower cost to the patient and the healthcare system. Given this data, patients for whom this is suitable, target IORT should be discussed and should be part of the consultation before the operation so that they can consider it and take it if they wish they, they, should, uh, they want to have it. UK NICE recommended target IORT in centers which have the equip expertise and the equipment in 2018, and that made a, a lot of media attention. It has been used all over the world, and these are photographs of patient of centers that use this technology. This is in US in 2016, in Germany in 2016, in Bangkok, again in the US, uh, Mannheim, and this is a map that shows centers where target IOT has been offered around the world. And they have counted this. At least 45,000 patients have been given this treatment in 260 centers in about 38 countries around the world. So it is being used in real world. You can use the um, your camera to look at target.org.uk website. We are currently doing target B trial now. Target A is complete and being used. Target B is for younger patients and those with very high risk after new adjunct chemotherapy to give target as a tumor bed boost instead of whole breast tumor bed boost in addition to whole breast radiotherapy with an idea to show if it is superior to standard um, radiotherapy in terms of local control and survival. I'll finish by a patient. Eight years ago, I was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. I had it for two months only before I was cured. I had target IORT at the same time as the operation to remove the cancer. I spent one night in hospital and I was back at work within days. No pain at any time, no complications, no scarring. I can't even tell where on my breast the surgery was and no recurrence, eight years. And that isn't just me being lucky. Studies show that my experience is similar to that of other women who've had target. I am so happy I was able to have this treatment. Thank you very much. Any questions, um, we'll be happy to answer. <laughs>